Time now for Pandora's Box. Nikki. Did you know, Pete, that driving here today, I noticed that there's actually a bar over the road called Pandora's. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Oh, it's fascinating. A it's bar. painted on the side of the building, yeah. And I, I was really shocked and I thought, did I see that subliminally when I wrote Pandora's Box? Quite strange, isn't it? Uh, so today on Pandora's Box, I thought I'd do what fans have been asking me to do and I will answer questions because we're not able to ring into the show at the moment. Um, these are questions that were sent to me about my book, Click Monkey, and they were sent to me on Instagram, the, the Ask Me Any thing um section of it so i thought that was pretty fair we'll answer yeah. them on the show i hmm. probably should have sent them to you pete and you could have asked me them um so the first question was how did i explain my book to my children which i think is quite Good question. Ooh, an Ooh, interesting right question, question. so um i basically told them that it was a sad story um because you know it's things are very black and white for children i told them it was a sad story about a girl who found herself in a few scary situations and that i hoped by writing the story parents might discuss the issues with their kids more sure and um that we could all get to a place where you know kids don't keep secrets and parents don't keep secrets and um it would help keep kids safe so yeah, Excellent. they were they were happy with that explanation. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say who you were that asked these questions, but you know who you are. Um, the next one was: Is the experience my my child abuse they're referring to? Mm -hmm. Is it something that I still struggle with? So um, I felt that I had dealt with uh, my childhood and everything that went on pretty well. Um, got myself into therapy as an adult. Um, but Did I, you find that writing the book was therapy? Yeah, that was one of the questions too. It was very cathartic right, okay. and very therapeutic, okay. yeah. But I found yeah. that when I went to therapy, and I think a lot of people go through this and feel this, I found that in the end I kind of got sick of talking about the thing that was upsetting me. I know they say it's healthy to, you know, put it out there and talk to someone, but I just didn't want to keep feeling bad about myself because that is something that I've been left with is that I feel bad about myself. Um, it was only when I experienced domestic abuse, um, you know, because abuse is abuse. It's As different. An adult. Yeah, whether yeah. you're a child or an adult, there's obviously different variations. There's physical, there's verbal. To me, the verbal is more more painful because it just plays around your Absolutely. head the whole time. Um, so when I experienced it as an adult, I realised that the childhood stuff was like an open wound inside me because it somehow it played into that. And I couldn't work out why because I'm not a psychologist. Um, and I started to, as the adult stuff was happening, I found it, in, I wasn't able to cope and the childhood stuff was rising up inside me. Um, I had feelings like I wish my parents had divorced when I was younger so that I would have had a portion of my childhood where I wasn't existing in their toxic marriage. And I know that sounds crazy because families always try and stick together, but that was just my personal experience. Um, and then the culmination of it was, and I, I haven't told many people, I did actually speak about it in my Herald Sun interview, but I think they ran out of space and they didn't mention it. Um, about 18 months ago, this is quite strange, I was contacted by one of my childhood abusers on social media, a private message, mm. requesting email addresses, requesting to send me gifts. Now, I'm 49 and this person is now in their 70s. And so, of course, initially, my instinct was hit the block button, get rid of this person, how dare you come back into my life. And it also gave me a really conscious feeling of what a very open portal social media is, mm. that this person had tracked me down. Obviously, they knew I'd been on television and all that had happened in my life. Um, and they very much sort of threw themselves back into my psyche. And in right when I was about to hit the block button, I... I thought, you know, this is like a, an anthropology experiment. I want to know why, and I want to know what they've got to say. Were, were they so, dealing with their own issues? No. No, it was just about being in my life again. And this person said to me, I've been married twice, but all I've done is think about you. I mean, how creepy is that? Yeah. So um, that was the reason, because I was going through something as an adult in my marriage, and then I was contacted by that person. That's not fair. The pressure mm. and the overwhelming sense of being overwhelmed uh made me i sat down and i thought to myself this can't be real this no. is like something you read in a book yeah and then i thought maybe it is a book yeah sure this this can't be real this is like a book make it a book write it down this is why people write books 
Um, okay, so another question was, how do I think my position in the media has been affected by this revelation? Well, I'm not sure I have a very strong position in the media, uh, but I think most people that have worked with me professionally have always known that I was like a bit different. People have asked me if I'm autistic. People have asked me if I'm um, if it's fame that has made me withdrawn or a bit strange. I am a bit strange. This is why those people are strange, right? I'm not going to say anything. Thanks, Pete. Dean's looking at me <laughs> nodding. He already knows I'm strange and he only met me a few months ago. Um, and I just, I don't think they've ever known why because who goes around talking about things they've experienced? It's not the first thing you say to someone. And I guess now that I've written the book and, you know, outed myself in the media, um, maybe it goes some way to explain to people why, which I think is good in a way. You know, they think, okay, I thought I knew who she was and she's not. And that's what people said to me at the book signing. They said, we know you as Sarah Beaumont and clearly you're not and you're so much more and you've experienced so much more. And I think that's why they were quite teary. Because sometimes you just think when you see sort of a, you know, I was always a glamorous celebrity and actress that um, life must be just amazing, just perfect. You've been on the cover of magazines and you're a swimwear model. And, you know, it's and it, when they learn that it's not and actually your life was really similar to theirs, they find that quite comforting but um i don't have any regrets about coming out and talking about it because the benefits that i've seen to others that have experienced it have been so great i feel like i've literally made hundreds of new friends and they're friends that i yeah. can talk to about real the, stuff. what they can relate to what That's you're, right. you're talking about they've been through and i do believe that people just learn from each other constantly in life you never stop learning you never stop being a child and learning and we can we can't do it alone we can't get through life alone um, so I think we it helps each other. Uh, we help each other by talking about it. I'm not Ingrid, and Ingrid is not Nicola. But there's parts of Ingrid's story that are relative to me, and there are parts of Ingrid's story that are relative to thousands, possibly millions of women, men as well, but women. Actually, a, a, a man came to me with a story two days ago from New York, and whoa. Where I'm actually going to assist him writing his story. He's Australian, but living in New York. One of the most amazing stories I've ever read in my life. True story. So that will be coming soon. Um, how does it affect me now? Um, I'll be honest with you. I think it does affect me now. Um, it affects me in ways that are a bit sad, like... Uh, you know, it's a bit personal, but like, I feel like there's something wrong with me and I'm dirty if I like sex, right? So that's wrong that, that somebody sort of took that away from you a little bit. They've tainted that side of your life uh, because it's that, that act is tied in with something negative in my life. So that's always going to be there because, you know, it was negative, it was criminal, it wasn't my fault and it, it, it's a mess. I'm sure a psychologist could help me go through it, but I just don't want to keep reliving it. Um, so I feel a bit like, you know, when you buy your child a toy in a toy shop and it looks really great in the box and you open it up and it's broken. Mm, I feel like, yeah. yeah, that's me a little bit. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sitting here. I'm without words. Oh, yeah. And, and, it's, and it's not often that I'm speechless. And the other yeah. way is, the other way is in very practical ways. And I'm sure, and the reason I'm saying this stuff, Eddie, is not to be self-indulgent. It's because the people listening are also going to feel like this. Is that yeah. when I'm in business meetings, I'm very conscious of this. Um, we're having a great meeting. We're talking. We're working together. Things are going brilliantly. There's no reason for anything to be negative. And it, particularly if it's a guy, um, you know, it happened a couple of days ago with an older guy, is that the guy made a sound and did a gesture that reminded me of my abuser. Sure. And I felt the blood drain from my face and I felt my eyes glaze over and I wasn't listening to what he was saying anymore. And I could see that he saw my disinterest and he probably thinks, ah, oh, she's not interested in what I've got to say, but it was something totally unrelated. Yeah. So um, I just go in the head sometimes. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm just glad. I'm glad that the story's out there. Um, I think it's a positive. Um, Are you healing? I am healing. I'm so healing. Do, do you know, can I say too that there's a lot of people who do get abused um, in their life as a young child and there's different levels of resilience to that. Yeah. And it's a matter of building up that resilience and learning um, methods of getting around it. So, yeah. But I do think if you look at someone that you've seen have a brilliant, you think has had a brilliant life, and listen, there's been brilliant aspects of my life. I've been so yeah. lucky, getting on Neighbours, all that stuff. Um, you know, and I was blessed to look a certain way at birth, so I was able to be a model and make lots of money, and that well, was and getting great. Getting on this show, of course. Getting on this show, I'm not kidding, is the pinnacle of my career. I love this show. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, this is the thing you talk about resilience. I met a woman who wasn't resilient, and she was in pieces mm. now. Wow, we've been messaging with each other. She's strong and she's going to write her story and put put it in a book as well. 